So when the Disney company releases a movie with a plot device centered around shoes, I kind of have to make a review. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dano channel. I'm Dano and I'm back this time with a movie review. A new movie just came out by the Disney company. Of course, it's a Disney movie I'm going to be reviewing. What else do I do here? It's all Disney all the dang time. Disney just released a live action version of Cinderella starring Lily James as Cinderella, uh, Richard Madden, King of the North, as uh, Prince Charming, or just King of the North, and Kate Blanchett as Lady Tremaine, who's really, really evil. Now, this movie is the second in a string of live-action conversions that Disney's been doing, uh, the first one being Maleficent. You can see that I did a review over there, shameless plug, uh, and this time around we're doing Cinderella, you can see some cool shoes that I did there. Another shameless plug. The live action Beauty and the Beast conversion is going to be coming out. And there's also more Beauty and the Beast artwork that I did. Shameless plug. Uh, this one is actually directed by Kenneth Branagh. And it's pretty cool that he did it. Because he's got like a really good history in doing these like period pieces. He was the guy who did uh, Hamlet a while back. He did Henry V. He was even the guy behind Thor. So he's got a lot of good history in bringing that kind of historical look to it, and that's what I think was one of the strongest points of this movie. It looked gorgeous. Everything in this movie looked really, really cool. The special effects were good, everything was really neat as far as that goes, but the look, just the whole look, like you see the pictures of the dress, the shoes, the way the animals got turned into the people like they do during the whole crazy sequence, that was really, really good. So I guess, spoiler alert, kind of, you can't really spoil this movie because it's nothing changed. It's all the same. It's the same as it ever was. Now, one of the things I really liked about the movie that was somewhat different from the old animated classic was that this one gave a bit more backstory. We got to see more of how Cinderella, or Ella, as her actual name is, how Ella grew up with her, uh, her dad and her mom, and what happened to get her living with Lady Tremaine and her evil stepsisters. It was kind of cool to see that side of it, to really see like what was taken away from her and how dire her situation was. Now, Kate Blanchett as Lady Tremaine was evil. She was just really good at playing a really bad person. She was like just giving these evil like looks. There was like one point where she was like looking at her and like there was a lot of times, I felt like she had like a big orange rind in her mouth. Like she was like looking real angry. Uh, and it was, it was pretty funny to see that. Uh, another person I think looked really good was uh, Stellan Skarsgård as like the main Duke guy. He had the most dapper mustache ever. It was really, it was pretty cool. And he, he nailed it. Like he did a really good job in that part too. I liked him as that kind of bad guy who wasn't really a bad guy, but was also sort of a bad guy. But before she lost her parents, Ella's mom gave her the message of, have courage and be kind. And they just really hammered through that the entire movie. It was it was it was good though. They they used it well and everything looked good. As I mentioned before, the dress looked really really cool. Like just the the colors on it, like everything looked like a really cool live version of what the animated feature was. One thing about the dress though, it also looked really really uncomfortable being that it was like a period piece. They wore corsets and like this poor girl Lily James looked like she was just like Ugh. it's like a little tiny little just fit in this tiny little waist thing, and it, was, it just looked really, it was, it was hard to watch. It was like, ah, there's no way you're gonna get me into one of those things. Also, because I don't wear dresses normally, so that's probably a plus. Also, Helena Bonham Carter did a pretty good job as the fairy godmother, though it was really short. She wasn't in it a whole lot. It was just like kind of her one sequence, and then that was really it. But I did feel like she did a pretty good job at it. Okay, another thing I, now this, this I kind of liked, but I also kind of didn't like because it was really creepy. But I said the special effects and everything were really good when the transformations happened between the pumpkin into the carriage or the mice into the horses. Like, that all looked really cool. But there was these two lizards that were like the coachman, and there was also a goose who was really funny looking. But the two lizard people, oh man, I liked it. So this goes under like, I liked it and I didn't like it. I liked it a lot because I was laughing the whole time. Just to how like their little teeth are and the way their noses were, like they really looked like lizard men. But I didn't like it because they really looked like lizard men and they were really creepy. One of the things I didn't like about the movie was that there was really nothing new. There wasn't a whole lot new. I mean they didn't 
a little bit more backstory in the beginning, but overall it was the same story we've already known and we've heard back when they did Maleficent. That was a little different because they kind of switched it on its head. It was the story from the villain's perspective and you got to see a different side of it. This time around it was just very straightforward. Cinderella as we've always known it. And there it is. Now, another thing I don't like about it, and it's, this is just me being super, super picky, is I'm, I'm a big Disney nerd, you all know this, and every time a Disney movie starts, we see the castle. It's like the Disney movie logo, the big, beautiful castle. You go to Disney World, it is Cinderella's castle. I even got to go inside the dream suite, it's Cinderella's castle. Here we go. <laughs> This looks exactly like my room at home. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, whoa! My, my voice like literally just cracked. I'm standing in Cinderella's shower. Ugh, I'm getting really tired. I was in Cinderella's shower. Like, you know, that happened. I am very, I hold that castle in my head as Cinderella's castle. So when they say they're gonna do a live action movie by Disney, it's not like some other studio's doing it, but it's Disney doing a live-action Cinderella, I want to see Cinderella's castle being used in the movie. And was it? Nope. Like, I was also bummed in Maleficent that they didn't use Sleeping Beauty Castle from Disneyland as Sleeping Beauty's castle, or at least something somewhat reminiscent. I understand if they don't want a bright pink castle, that's fine. But use something close, like make us think and remember that if you're gonna call it Sleeping Beauty's castle, or you're gonna call it Cinderella's castle. Just bring it, make it all come full circle, make it real for us. Cause that's, I mean, that's why we go to the parks. Cause it's like, you know, that's Cinderella's castle. It just, it makes it that much more real for us. So it would have been nice for them to bring that all in full circle. Now, one main big difference between this version of the movie and the old animated one, aside from One's Real Life and One's a Cartoon, is this one is not a musical. There was no like sung music in it like traditional Disney movies have. But if you stick around through the credits, the music that plays during the credits is newer versions of those older songs like uh, A Dream is a Wish, Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo, and you can hear that kind of stuff like newer takes on it. But I also have to warn you, there is no end credit sequence. So you don't have to stick around afterwards. I wish I would have known that first off. I didn't, I had to wait and sit there forever for nothing. I mean, it's 2015. What's up, you guys slacking? Uh, overall though, the movie was good. If you're a Disney nerd, I'd say go see it. Even if not, just go see it anyways. Like, it was it was definitely worth seeing, but if I didn't see it, I wasn't missing much. It just looked good. I didn't feel like I wasted my time. Also, a good thing to uh, mention is it's okay for kids to see. Sometimes when they do these like live action versions, there's some stuff in there you may not want your kids to see. Parents, it's cool. Your kids can see it. I think the worst of it is the stepsisters, who are very evil also. They say, like, shut up and stupid, so if you're not cool with those words, then maybe don't take your kids, but if you don't mind those things being said, it's it's PG, you know, it's not G-rated like a normal Disney movie, but it's PG, just because little things like that. But otherwise, it's pretty good. It had good moments, it was fun, had a great message of have courage and be kind. So overall, the movie ends up on a happy note. Cinderella marries the King of the North, and everybody's, you know, happily ever after. It's, it is what it is. Well guys, that just about wraps up this review. I hope you liked hearing what I had to say about the movie. Let me know down in the comments below what you think if you saw Cinderella or if you have a good idea for another live action conversion of one of the favorite fairy tales. What would you do if you could make your own live version of an old classic? Leave it down below. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button. It helps me out quite a bit. Uh, also, if you're new around here, hit subscribe. I'd love to have you join in on all the Dano Channel fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to have courage and be kind. And you know I love you. I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye. I'm standing in Cinderella's shower. That's so cool.